Welcome back to the Malted Man Cave. We are down here in our double header. Um, down here in the pit of despair. Don't even try to excuse me. <clears throat> Don't even try to excuse me. <laughs> Another reference to the Princess Bride. Great. I movie. think that's the only reference that we. Oh, wait, no, no. No, no. <laughs> Bow to her! Bill! Bow, Bow to the, the Queen of Garbage, the Queen of Phil! <laughs> I really hope. People have seen the Princess Bride. Again, we're going to lose subscribers right. once again. So tonight, we're going to be doing for our doubleheader, the last of the doubleheader, the Ben Riek Single Malt. This is a mouthful. Uh, single Cast Bottling, Oloroso Sherry Finish, Limited 2000 Release. And I don't want to make fun of this because actually I love it when they give us a lot of information on the bottle. And I'm actually going to read it to you verbatim. So this is bottle number 244 of 619. Distilled in 2000, cast number 3105, age 12 years, bottled, date of bottling July 2013, and the cast type is an Oloroso Sherry Butt. I'm actually going to show you guys this because I wish all distilleries would do something similar to this with all of their whiskeys. <laughs> Am I covering you up? Yeah, I'm just going to do the rest of you like that. Just, I'll just peek through the. Uh... <laughs> this comes in at a whopping 58. 0.1% ABV. It says on the label, cast strength, natural color, and non-chill filtered. So, daddy like. Um, Mommy like too. What else are we going to say about Ben Riek? Ben Riek is a space side distillery. Um, uh, the previous, the, uh, what, what did we do first before this? The 10. Glenn Farkas is also uh, a space side. That's as well. Do yeah, you know Glenn where space side is? Is it in Scotland? Yes, it is. <laughs> Actually, uh, wait, no. Is it by the sea? Yes, it is. All right. So, well, some. So this right here, right about there, that is Speyside. So these right here, you're not going to get so much of the, the coastal. Okay. Yeah, but yeah. the ones that are kind of hug um, right along the sea right here, you're definitely going to get that sea saltiness, kind of marine briny notes. Okay. Um, Fun fact, um, what's the one that calls, what, okay, so all, space sides. All space sides are highlands, but not all highlands are, are space, space sides. sides. Okay, what was, the get, highland, what was the one that you said claims to be, there was like a one, that I, McCown. Uh, McCown. McCown. Yes. They're a space side, but they actually put highland, and people get confused, they're like, I thought they were a space side. Okay. That's because you can be a space you side be and both. a highland. Okay. Um, so again, the Ben Riek, all our also sherry finish, um, cast rank 2000, limited release. Um, I think that's about it. Let's get into the taste of some whiskey. Let's do it. Fill her up, Buttercup. <laughs> we had a couple. Jesus, buttercup. <laughs> we had a couple of outtakes. <laughs> we <laughs> <We've been laughs> messed up a lot. This isn't this our review. first review. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of, oh, sorry. My bad. Yeah, so we're, we're ready to... This used to be a full bottle. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. Hmm. Alright, so I'm, I'm going to go first tonight. Alright. First thing I get on the nose is that this is the most creamy, nutty, single malt scotch I have ever had. That is the thing that I would say most stands out about this whiskey is how nutty and creamy this is. So I get a creamy peanut butter and cashews, milk chocolate, oak, cinnamon, and clove. Yay! I didn't get cloves this time. Um, now this well, is something I took a... I'm not real good at picking out floral notes, as I always say, um, but I actually, I know this sounds so lame, but I actually was smelling this, and then the, I actually get daffodils, Ooh. and I actually went out and smelled some daffodils, and it really does, I like took out my dram. I took it out, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> mommy, mommy, what's daddy My doing? wife just looked from like outside, she's like, what the frick are you doing? What's he doing? Um, I get caramel and just this creamy bananas foster cheesecake. Have you ever had a good bananas foster cheesecake? Uh, yes. So good. And I, I totally smell it. 
And then I get a little sherry that kind of fades into apple juice and cocoa lopez, which is kind of a creamy coconut um, liquid that they mix a lot in like fruity Caribbean, like summery vacation drinks. Mm -hmm. So that's how I go. That's what I get on those. What do you get? Well, I did say raisins, but Keith told me to stop saying raisins. <laughs> I did not say stop. I said try and distinguish if you can try, find any other yeah. dark fruit notes. So I, I immediately went to the other prunes, prunes, dried prunes. Uh, anyways, raisins, kind of a, uh, that like a date. Um, I don't know how to better explain it. Um, followed that with, and mine are pretty simple, um, simple smells, uh, maple syrup, I just had some. Um, I, I just had some Asian food tonight, and ginger. It reminded me of. I was eating my uh, my uh, tuna roll and a little ginger, and I smelled that, and it reminded me of that. And then lastly, and I felt kind of cool about this because I get to inherit this. But it was my grandpa. My grandpa has a bunch of old. Um, here in the states, we we might not have a lot of history in buildings. <laughs> like Europe does, but man, do we have history when it comes to guns. Yes, we do. <laughs> and uh, my, my grandfather, um, he's passed away, but he has a treasure trove of old firearms. One of them was a flintlock pistol. And I can remember striking the flint, and that was one of the first, the first thoughts that I had when I smelled this. It smelled like, um, like flint, like striking a flint. Um, I don't know if you've ever done that for camping or not, but it reminded me of it. And you had, he had told me this before. We normally do, he comes over, I form a dram, we sit around, we get some of our tasting notes before we do a review. And he actually told me that, and I was like, huh, that's kind of funny because as most of you guys know that really drink a lot of whiskey, you know, McAllen is really known for that, those flinty um, flint notes. And so... I actually didn't smell it at first, but then after you said it, it is, it is in I'm, it, for I'm, sure. I'm put, putting it in your mind. The yeah. power of suggestion, the power. but it's it's there. Whether it's psychosomatic or not, I definitely smell it now. What'd you get on the palate? Um, let's, let's get in there and take a swig. Let's get in there. Again, just that, like this guy's boom. This is so nutty. Just creamy peanut butter and cashews again. That kind of goes into chocolate mm. caramels, dark fruits. There's so many flavors. And cinnamon red hot candies. Mm. And hold on, let me take another. Do you like this? Yeah. It's a lot more complicated than the Glen Fergus 10. Yeah. It's entry level. Yeah. This is like a fairly expensive, like, cast they, rank, yeah. like, single cask. It's, it's a little bit better quality. But for an entry level, that was pretty yeah. good. Um, again, like I said, dark fruits, cinnamon red hot candies, <clears throat> Coco Lopez again, that coconutty, kind of liquidy taste. Again, creamy bananas foster. And it's funny you said maple syrup because I actually put French toast. Oh, yeah. Right there. With a little bit of the confectionery sugar. Yeah, a little sugar and, on the And top. maybe some syrup on it. And lastly, um, it kind of was like a mix between the palate and the finish. It trailed into candied oranges, marshmallows, and like a little subtle like trail end of mint. Yeah. Um, my first note was that it was very flavorful. There's just a lot to try to pick from and uh, pick through as far as what you're tasting. Um, what stood out to me was, of course, the sherry notes um, going into the brown sugar, the dark chocolate. And the reason why I was asking if it was a coastal distillery is because it, it does have a little saltiness, to me at least. I get a little saltiness on the on the palate. Um, but uh, other than that, man, it's. Uh, I would like to try this again when maybe a little earlier in the day, a little clearer head, maybe the first drink of the night, and see what I get out of it. For sure. Yeah. All right. Um, my, you, like, the last thing I said was kind of my finish. Again, Yeah. trails into candied oranges, marshmallows, and a, the settlement. I, I wrote pretty much the same thing, except this was a fairly, it's fairly long <clears throat> for me, um, sweet and nutty, but I also, um, 
it reminded me of one that would pair well with sitting around smoking a cigar. Um, it immediately reminded me of like, oh man, this or would be blow. great. Maybe, nah, no, nah, cigar. Good, good cigar, sitting down. Just, and it probably because of the, the, the complication of the flavor. Yeah. Something that you want to sit on and enjoy. I would say that this would be like a, like, you don't have to drink it fast. You just sit and enjoy it and, and uh, take it all in. Sitting here right now, I kind of get like a little bit of spicy black pepper. Yeah. Kick. Right yeah. now, I'm getting that. But I did it right down in my notes. Um, if you like sherried whiskeys, this is something you want to get your hands on. I know there's probably not there's not a whole lot of bottles out there, but if you can find this, pick it up. Um, and it's, it's it's like the most nutty sherried um, whiskey I've ever had. Just the nut, the creamy nuttiness is just everywhere. So for me, the Malted Man Cave Mark is a you know this is a this is a ninety. Out of 100. <laughs> 90 out of 100. Mal Malted Man Cave Mark. 89 for me. I couldn't decide between an 89 and a 90. And uh, 89 for me. So, so that we Cheers. can be a little different. Malted Man Cave approved. Um, if you can find this, which you probably... Not a whole lot of you are going to be able to go find this, but if you can, pick it up. It's a great whiskey. Slancha. Well, wait. We have the question of the night. Oh, I completely forgot. That's all right. Um... It was because, and the reason why I remember it is because I came up with it. Uh, of course he doesn't remember. <laughs> Anyways, I wanted to ask Keith, throughout history, since the dawn of man, what era, what time period, what century, what period of time, industrial revolution, the living through... Uh, Ancient Rome, things like that. Where where do you see yourself spending some time? You don't have to live there. Just uh, just being a maybe a watcher or a participant, whatever you want. Okay. I always used to say because I was in the military, and I'm not as big as I used to be because I had I got hurt when I was in the military. I had a couple back surgeries, and I haven't been able to work out as much. But I used to be pretty buff. You detested that, right? Yes. Back in the day. Yes. Now I'm a, I'm kind of buff, but I got a little loving. You got some loving on top of it. So, but <laughs> I always used to say when I was bigger, I was like, man, being a like a, a warrior in the like nowadays sucks because you can be like the strongest, like just bad a, <laughs> and just one little, poof, you're dead. Yeah. <laughs> so I would have liked to have lived back in kind of like the ancient Roman times. First of all, because I'm fascinated by just Roman history and just ancient civilizations. Yeah. Whether it's you know Egyptians, Greeks, but specifically Romans, the Roman civilization it really interests me. Um, and also, being in the, the military warrior back then would have been a lot better for big folk like my country-fed, corn-fed boys like myself. Get in there, get you a sword. There ain't boy. no guns. They have arrows, but at least we got shields. We can yeah. block that. We'll block out the sky. <laughs> 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 Xerxes. This, Sorry. This has been this has been a late night. <laughs> That's what you reminded me of. For three hundred. For three hundred. <laughs> Our arrows will blot out the sun. <laughs> uh, man, so yeah, that's uh definitely Alexandrian uh Rome would Same be for awesome. You? Well no 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 I'm saying that would be awesome. I I would love to be I think it would be awesome to be a part of 1770-ish when American Revolution. E everything's starting, um, We're gonna the piss, wheels... We're going to piss off a lot of our UK... Uh, it's just <laughs> a, you know, a birth of a nation. Like Sorry that, about that, guys. <laughs> just something, something that became the United States of America, that early beginning, I think that would be incredible to be a... Uh, just to see something like that. Now, I know the United States calls itself that as far as, like, the leader of the free world. Stuff like that. It's it's all... I mean, it's making yourself feel better as far... I'm sure every country says that. But it's been a while since a nation... I think we're the last nation to be founded in as far as such a important world leader. Yeah. 
And so I, just being a part of that would be amazing to, to see that really any city state growing from yeah. like in having the knowledge of what it becomes. Yeah. yeah America awesome. is not quite what it once was, but we're partial. We still think America is a great country. Sure. Um, funny story. Plus it's got us in it. Funny story that. So, you know, we talked about one of my favorite movies was Patriot and one of our last reviews, The Knob Creek. Yeah. Um, and I've always been like, yeah, America. And I found, found out, <laughs> um, I've always been like, yes, we fought for our freedom, you know, forget that. No taxation without representation. Then I found out that my family is a bunch of loyalists. Turncoats. <laughs> oh, no, no, not turncoats. A bunch of Tories. Oh, they were the ones that like, backs. supported King George and they went up to Canada and they were like, we support England, Mother England. So we're from a bunch of traitors. So. Mm. So My people are a bunch of Germans the Clarks, that came over man. after. To the Clarks. To the Clarks. Cheers. All right, guys. If you can find this, pick it up. The original Draft Dodgers. It's great. <laughs> Slodge it.